If you go below 20, that's fine, but you will suffer in getting insignificant returns in excess of 20% a year. But if you go above 40 delta, well, that's basically going to increase your assignment risk to almost a coin flip 50-50. While being ready and able to take the stock is part of the plan, being assigned is the end of selling puts and getting a much lower price on the stock, and it's the beginning of generating income on the stock by selling covered calls. Nothing wrong with that, but again, it is nice to make 2% a week and keep doing that, rinsing and repeating that process for 5 to 10 to even 15 weeks if you pick a low delta. If you sold a cash secured put one time and you were assigned, you are either doing something wrong or you're terribly unlucky by picking a stock that has tanked. Cash secured put just means that you have the cash to buy the shares when you are assigned. As a coach and trader myself, I'd never really recommend naked option selling. I'm all about consistent safe income, not gambling and not unlimited risk. So when I am selling puts, I'm doing so at a 30 delta, maybe even less than that, and I am always cash secured. So if I sell a $10 strike put option, I do have the $1,000 to buy 100 shares of that put option. So selling short or cash secured puts indicates that you have the cash or the margin, I do use margin from time to time, to buy the stock if it is assigned. Be aware of any upcoming earnings reports or other events that could cause a huge movement in the stock. It is best to close or have the put expire prior to that event. However, I do sometimes sell puts before earnings. And I've done that very successfully on Tesla. I've made a lot of money on Tesla because the options will usually be very expensive. And that's not a bad thing if you're an option seller. The market knows that there is an earnings event and the implied volatility will spike for that earnings event. And this spike translates into larger premiums on the option itself. So again, it is better to avoid, but it does depend on a case by case basis if you wanna sell a put that does include the earnings event. This is also why I run a Discord where I trade live because it really depends. Sometimes I wanna trade into earnings and sometimes I don't based on many different factors. Now, when selling a put on the selected stock, here is the game plan as I'm gonna show you the example. Seven days to 45 days is going to be the days to expiration. This offers a good premium and at the same time, these options are decaying very fast. So you are collecting a good amount per day based on the theta decay of that option. So people ask me all the time, is it better to go one week or is it better to go one month? And I always tell people the same thing. It's very similar to real estate properties. If you can have a property that cash flows, whether you're collecting $1,000 a week or $4,000 a month, they are essentially the same thing. There is no point of going to your tenant's house and knocking on his door and saying, hey, can I get my $1,000 this week? Just let that cash flow property do its thing and collect your $4,000 per month. Options are very similar to that. I like doing monthly trading because it's a lot less work, but weekly trading is also very fun. And I will be honest, there's a slightly bigger profit on a weekly trade. So for example, it might be $1,050 per week instead of $4,000 per month because there is a little bit more time decay on those options that are expiring in one week. And there's also usually a little bit more implied volatility in the short term. But regardless whether I'm going one week or one month, I'm always going for a 70% probability of out of the money, or essentially around a 30 delta or lower. If I can get a 25 delta and still get paid handsomely, I'm very happy with that because that means I'm going to win 75% of the time and one out of four times I will get assigned. Calculating the number of contracts you want to open based on your account size is also very important. I don't wanna open up $15,000 worth of Oatly stock, which is a small cap company that I own, as that would be slightly risky as a percentage of my portfolio. While I wouldn't really care about opening a $250,000 position on SPY, since it's a large cap diversified ETF. So you wanna be careful when you're running the wheel strategy. Of course, if you have a small portfolio, it's good to go for cheaper stocks. But be aware that you don't wanna just pick cheap stocks. You wanna have a combination of different stocks that you're running the strategy on, as it's never wise to put all of your eggs in one basket. Now, the last thing before I jump into an example is you wanna look at closing this position. So if you've made 50% of the position in three days and your position is expiring in four weeks, then you probably wanna close this position. That's because ideally you are making money over a four week period. But if you've already made all of your money in three days, there is no reason to keep holding this position until expiration unless you really, really wanna get assigned, 
What I would do in this case scenario is I would just close the position, take my 50% gain, and then reinvest the money into another position. With all these tricks and secrets being said, now let's go over an example in my portfolio of running the wheel strategy on SPY, QQQ, and other positions that I'm looking to open up in the near future. All right, guys, so let's take a look at my portfolio. I absolutely love the wheel strategy, and I have it on so many stocks right now. I'm running the wheel strategy on NEO, actually on American Airlines. I have already got input, and I'm just selling covered calls at this point. Another NEO shares, um, as I go down here, I have it on Zim, which I have done really well two weeks in a row now. Still running another sell put on American Airlines despite having covered calls. I am always APS, always selling puts and calls, okay? So American Airlines, then you can see my Alibaba position. So I have a whole bunch of Baba actually, 87 put, 89 covered call, 80 dollar put. I have recently opened up JetBlue, JD, um, Oatly is going really well. And then you can get into my really big positions. So obviously I have so many more positions, but I really just wanna talk about SPY and triple Q. So let's start off with SPY. This is a huge position for me. It currently compromises about 84% of my portfolio. So what I'm doing is I'm selling puts at 388 and the strike that I'm picking at 388 is pretty safe. So if I click into this 388 put, you're gonna notice that my Delta is not that high. In fact, it's 0.19. So for me, this is amazing. I love this type of sweet spot where the delta is between 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0 0.25. What that means is every time I sell a put option, I'm going to be winning like 80, 85% of the time if I'm picking these type of deltas. So I do eventually wanna get assigned. Again, I don't mind owning these companies and these ETFs, but in the meantime, I am collecting a whole lot of income on my way of acquiring the shares. Now, I just wanna pinpoint my expiration days. So I have a put credit spread, which we can ignore for this video, but then you will see that I have expirations for May 19 and May 19. Now, people will always ask me, do you prefer one week trading, one month trading? The fact of the matter is, as long as it's one to six weeks out, that's more than fine. So I decided to go about six weeks out and I currently have a position. And as you can see, I am up $11,000 on SPY. SPY is my number one ETF for running the wheel strategy because it is so diversified. If you check out what's inside this, there's technology, financial services, utilities, and a whole gamut of other sectors. In fact, every single sector. Now I wanna take a look at Triple Q as well. I have 10.8% of my money in Triple Q, and I'm also doing something very similar to what you just saw with SPY. This is basically my favorite strategy. Again, the wheel, but I actually never finished doing the wheel. So whenever I sell puts and I finally get assigned, yes, I'm selling covered calls, which you already understand from this video. But even when I get put, I am still selling more puts. As you can see here, I actually have a very huge potential obligation to buy 25 contracts of triple Q. And I am using margin, but again, I've been doing this for almost a decade, so I trust myself with margin. I never had a problem in nine years, so I wouldn't recommend using margin. I can make a video on margin if you like. Just shoot me a comment down below, and if I get at least 15 people asking for a margin video, then I will go ahead and make it. But as you can see, I have a pretty big obligation on triple Q and I'm ready to buy more triple Q. But currently the strike price is 284 and triple Q is at 312. So the chances of me actually getting executed are slim to none. I mean, if you look at the premium, it's only 12 left and I have already made $7,625 on this position. So that is how lucrative it is to run the wheel strategy. I mean, this is a prime example of me running the wheel. Now, if you'll notice, it is basically expiring in about a week from today, and it's only worth $300. So in my opinion, and I haven't had a chance to do this, but tomorrow I will be closing out this trade because it's already made all the profit that I wanted to make. And at this point, there's not much point of holding it for a little bit over a week for just $300 when I'm tying up a large amount of capital. So that's something else that you wanna keep in mind when you're doing the wheel strategy. If you can make a very big short-term gain, then there is no point of continuing to hold that put option, you can either roll it up higher and be a little bit more aggressive, or you can just take your profits and roll your collateral into a different trade. So you can pick another attractive trade, or you can even pick the same ETF, but just a different expiration day and a different strike price. Because basically right here, as you can see, I mean, I've just made everything. So there's no point of holding this anymore. You'll also notice if I go to my portfolio, QQQ and SPY are very heavy in my portfolio because both of them are very diversified ETFs. They have a lot inside them. I mean, for example, like airlines crashed today a bit. I mean, they went down by 9%. And yes, I have American Airlines, but I'm not panicking at all because my position in this company is not that big. 
And if you'll notice Alibaba, yes, it's down 7%. However, again, my covered call right now is actually in the money. And that's something that's really interesting. This is actually something I learned at Goldman Sachs. And this is something that Mark Cuban actually did when he got a $4 billion compensation from Yahoo when he ended up selling his company. He had a whole lot of stock and he was afraid obviously to hold $4 billion worth of his stock. So what he wanted to do was he wanted to get out of his stock, but he couldn't because there's something called like a restriction period. As soon as you sell a company, you're not allowed to just dump your shares right away, especially $4 billion worth. I mean, that is a lot of money. So instead, what he actually did was one of his financial advisors, and I'm not sure on the exact details there, but he ended up selling covered calls, but they were in the money, similar to what I'm doing on Alibaba right now. That's actually called a caller. A caller is just a covered call, but you are selling in the money covered calls. So for example, Alibaba is at 92, but I have sold 89 covered calls and that's in the money. And that's why the premium is so juicy. But today Alibaba fell a lot. So literally my day's gain was $5,300 in one single day. I made five grand and that's because I am really hedged. Now, of course, it's basically all of my total return at this point, but that is amazing to see that the stock can fall 7%, meaning a lot of people lost a ton of money, but my wheel strategy or my covered call here on the wheel strategy has fully protected me and I am very cushioned against the downside. I think the most important thing to really understand when you're running the wheel strategy is how to sell puts to begin with, because if you do that properly, then you're going to have a profitable wheel strategy. And if you wanna watch the best video on YouTube about selling put options, you should check out my video right here on the screen.